The beginning of the film introduces us to the protagonist, George Foreman. As long as he can remember, George Foreman has always lived in poverty. Even when his family moved to another state, they settled down in a run-down house in the poorest part of town. His mother is a single parent who works hard throughout the day, but even so, it is difficult to fill the stomachs of her kids. She gives great importance to religion, but seeing as God has given them nothing but misery, George is the single non-believer in his family. As George grows older, his anger grows along with him. Maybe it is his upbringing, or maybe it's just in his nature, but he grows up to be a thug, just like his disdainful school teachers expected him to be. He is a big man with a strength to back up his temper, so he makes a living out of robbing drunk people who stumble out of bars at night. But one day, his luck runs out when his victim ends up being a policeman who went undercover to lure him out. As soon as he notices this, he makes a run for it with the police hot on his tail. He somehow manages to hide, but unfortunately, the police come with a police dog to sniff out his location. With no other way left, he smears his face and clothes with sewage in order to mask his scent, and it works. The police withdraw and George is saved from going to prison, but he feels all his dignity crumble away. He decides right then that he cannot go on like this forever. He must make a change, so when he sees an ad for Job Corps, an institution where they teach skills to young men in exchange for their labor, George is all too willing to join. After convincing his mother, he sets out to join the Job Corps in hopes of starting a new life for himself. But even at the institution, George remains somewhat of an outcast because of his anger issues and inability to get along with other people. He mostly tries to rein in his anger and keeps to himself, only getting into minor scuffles sometimes. But he is unable to control the anger that flares up when he sees a man casually strolling into the cafeteria while wearing the pair of shoes stolen from George. Enraged, he runs after the thief, not even letting a closed door stop him as he smashes his way through. He tries to push that man out of the window, but just as the violence is about to escalate any further, a campus instructor called Doc intervenes and breaks up the fight. With his history of violence and anger issues, Doc makes a decision to send George back home. While the instructor drives him to the bus stop, George begs him not to kick him out of the facility since he has nowhere left to return to. Doc decides to give him one last chance and changes their destination to the boxing club where he works as the coach. He knows how strong George is so he makes him fight against an experienced boxer without giving him any time to prepare. George thinks he can win easily as he has never lost in the street fights before, but his ego takes a hit when he is badly defeated. He first starts out boxing in order to pay back for the humiliation he faced this day, but he realizes that he is progressing like no other, and soon, boxing becomes his passion. Surpassing the already high expectations, he manages to reach the heights of competing in the Olympics within just one year into his boxing career. All his siblings gather in front of the TV to cheer him on while his mother is still displeased about him getting into fights, even if it is for a professional sport. To the world's disbelief, he wins the Olympic gold medal in boxing at the age of 19 and waves the American flag in victory. He goes back home in his best clothes, wearing the gold medal around his neck. He confidently walks up to his friends to brag about his achievements, but all they give him is criticism for raising the American flag when America targets and kills black people. George feels disrespected that even after achieving so much, all his friends focus on him waving a flag, so he decides to chase an even greater honor in boxing, the World Heavyweight Championship. He goes all out in preparations for the championship, from training under new professional coaches to joining a new gym. It is also at this time that he meets a woman who instantly catches his fancy. She comes to all his matches as his girlfriend and some months later as his wife to cheer him as he wins competitions again and again, never losing once to maintain his undefeated streak. 
and finally, he is able to compete for the championship belt against an opponent who defeated Muhammad Ali two years ago. As he enters the ring to fight, the entire arena is chanting his opponent's name. No one expects him to win, but it does not matter to George because he fully trusts in his skills. His opponent dominates him at the start of the match, but soon, George gets into the zone and lands consecutive punches, knocking down his opponent, and just like this, he wins the rounds back to back, and against all odds, he stands victorious. The crowd goes wild as he is crowned the new heavyweight champion of the world. But after all the parties and celebrations end, he sees Muhammad Ali making fun of him on the TV. He says that he is ready to fight George anytime, anywhere, and can easily defeat him. Taking his provocations to heart, George sets out on a new goal, and that is to defeat Ali. With George's fame steadily rising and his participation in big matches, he quickly grows wealthy and buys his mother a lavish house just like he always wanted to do. His sister is now pregnant and he himself has a beautiful daughter. On the surface, his family is as happy as they can be, but hidden from everyone's eyes, George's marriage with his wife is falling apart. During his rise to fame, he gets lost in the stardom and starts sleeping around with other women, and his wife unavoidably catches his infidelity. Soon, he travels to fight in a big match against Muhammad Ali. He finds Ali trash-talking him in front of a group of people and making them laugh at the expense of George. George walks up to him but stays silent, holding in his rage to let it all out on the boxing ring. By this time, Ali has grown older, and George is the current world champion, so everyone expects George to have an easy win. But unexpectedly, Muhammad Ali still has the ability deserving of his legacy. During all the rounds, he retreats near the ropes of the ring and focuses on blocking George's punches. It is a long, drawn-out match where George plans to pile on the injuries on his opponent, leading to his ultimate victory. But it seems Ali had a plan of his own. During the first rounds, he tires George out until his punches end up growing weak and then he swiftly moves to retaliate. As George is knocked out by Ali, he faces his first defeat during his career as a boxer. And after the fight, he returns home to his divorce proceedings. Nothing in his life seems to be working out as his mood worsens and he grows agitated day by day eager to achieve something so that he can move on from this sense of helplessness. In an attempt to redeem himself and clear his image, as one of the greatest boxers alive, he joins a match against five people all at once. But Muhammad Ali joins in as a commentator and starts making a fool of George again. Enraged, George demands for a rematch, but Ali walks away, claiming that he does not fight losers. After the match, Doc joins him inside his locker room to try to calm George's spirit and discourages him to play in gimmick matches like this again. He is somewhat successful in talking sense into him, but right at that moment, George gets a message that his sister is in labor and her baby is in grave danger. George has always been a non-believer, but for the first time in his life, he gets down on his knees and sincerely prays to God. His sister's baby ends up surviving and the doctors claim that it is somewhat of a miracle. As he watches his nephew in awe, his sister says that the baby's life is the result of his prayer. In the next scene, we see George in another boxing match against a new rising talent and he loses the match once again. Ever since he lost against Ali, his fights have never been the same. After his shameful loss, he immediately heads back into his locker room because he doesn't feel very well. His breath quickens, and all of a sudden, he collapses on the floor. With his pulse getting weaker and weaker, his coaches start fearing that he is about to die soon. But fortunately, he quickly jolts awake. He feels as if he got resurrected by the power of Jesus Christ, and this incident marks his journey to becoming a devout follower of God. To everyone's utter surprise, he quits boxing and decides to become a preacher. 
he has let go of all the anger in his heart and strives to help people in the future in order to gain their respect through love and not through his fists. He makes peace with Muhammad Ali and gives his heartfelt apology to his ex-wife. Sometime later, he meets another woman at the church and starts pursuing her. Years after finding God and becoming a preacher, George lives a fairly simple life with his wife and kids. One day at his church, a lady brings in her grandson and asks George to teach him boxing. But George is too caught up in religion and says that all the answers are in the Bible and not in the fight. He quickly regrets his decision of dismissing the boy when, next week, he hears that the boy has been caught while attempting to commit a robbery. Realizing his mistake, he soon decides to buy an old gym and renovate it into a youth center, hoping to give the young kids a place to vent their emotions and do something productive. A year later, all the lights suddenly go out inside the gym and George finds that he has never paid the electricity bill. This leads him to the bank where he realizes that there is only $2,000 left in his bank account. He entrusted all his money to his manager, thinking of him as a good friend, but the manager betrayed him and gambled away all of his money. With the danger of bankruptcy looming over his head, George takes on gigs like commercials and small fan sign events, but all that he earns falls way too short of the amount he owes to the bank. Left with no other way to pay his bills, he decides to take up boxing again. After convincing his wife, he goes to find Doc, who still works as a coach in his previous gym. He thinks it is near impossible for George to become a successful boxer again at his age, but George is determined, making Doc eventually agree. He gets back into shape and trains very hard to return his body back in form after years of not practicing. The night of his first match after a decade of quitting boxing, George is completely calm as he is not fueled by rage, but rather his love for the sport. Even though this match is against a low-rung boxer, no one expects him to win, but he proves everyone wrong and makes a successful comeback. Starting from the bottom up once again, he slowly makes his way to the championship match. But unfortunately, this time, he loses the belt, but he is not dissatisfied. With the match generating him millions of dollars, he does not have the need to step into the ring again, but he is set on winning the championship belt. At the age of 45, George steps in to fight the world championship match for the last time. He is an old man competing in a youth sport, and no one has high expectations of him. His opponent keeps overwhelming him through the match, but George has a clear path to victory set in mind. Relying on his years of past experience, he successfully knocks out his opponent, rendering him almost immobile on the floor. The referee counts to ten, and the crowd erupts in cheers. On this day, George Foreman makes history as the oldest person to become the world champion. And that's a wrap for this movie recap. Thanks for watching.